All right, today's day 11 training camp recap is officially here. So, Jameson Williams, Trinity Benson, Emmanuel Mosley did not participate in practice. Emmanuel is listed as day to day on the NFI list that is active and was on the sidelines today watching practice. Now, today's injuries, Denzel Mims did go down hard after making a reception and colliding with Tracy Walker and limped off the field. So I will be keeping an eye out on that injury by Denzel Mims. Hopefully he is all right. Now, players returning to practice, Frank Ragnow and Ifatu Melifanwu did return to practice today. Great news for the Detroit Lions as Melifanwu has been Playing all right in practice, but obviously you still need to see more of him and obviously solidifying your defensive line at the center position. I don't need to go into details about Frank and his importance to this offensive line because we all know it's super important. But also running backs with the two-headed monster, Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery has formed a real two-headed monster in Detroit's backfield, even getting raves from a Super Bowl Winning head coach in Mike March saying Gibbs reminds him a lot of Hall of Fame running back Marshall Falk. Even Coach Campbell in a full interview with SI even talked about Ron Dane and Tiki Barber-esque there, where they were complimenting each other amazingly with the run game. And us old heads rem- remember that Tiki Barber, Ron Dane as Thunder and Lightning. You know, and the same could be said really about Jameer Gibbs and David Montgomery. Now, Coach also talked about how important it was to bring in a guy like Scotty Montgomery after losing Deuce Staley. He said he was a, it was freaking huge. Scotty is a stud, you know, saying that he did, he does respect Deuce Staley and what he did bring and things of that nature. But, you know, Scotty Montgomery is a huge part of what we're going to be doing on in our run game. So having him being our running back coach and assistant head coach, you know, it's huge. So, you know, definitely a huge part of what we're trying to do. Now, if you are getting value, consider clicking that like button. It does help and is greatly appreciated. Now, observation of today's practice, let's state the obvious SummerSlam is in Detroit this weekend. So we've seen former WWE champion and Celtic warrior Sheamus. We also seen Red Wings star Mo Snyder and Lucas Raymond was also in attendance today. Now, Julian Okawara intercepted a pass from Nate Sudfeld, who had a horrible practice today, by the way. And I'll talk a little bit more into that in detail in a bit, but... Coach Campbell wasn't really, hasn't really backed him up, you know, Julian up a whole lot. You know, saying he's, it's really in it. Uh, it's a really impressive, then reverse right back. Meaning he has a flash and then he goes right back to the same old Julian. Being in, a, in that third year with the team, he needs to start putting things on tape and making those new things, or making those things the new norm. So Julian's job is 110% on the line this year and is in dire jeopardy. So also he said that he's too talented not to be consistent and just being a flash a flash player. You know, again, like I was saying, he shows flashes, then reverts right back into the same old Julian Okawara. He has to be more consistent if he's going to make this team. If not, he is already gone. Let me put that into perspective again. If he does not show consistency, he is already gone. So he has a short amount of time to get consistent, and he better start doing it now. The time is now. There's no time to wait. So he needs to get more consistent and making that the new normal. Consistency, going in, making plays, Doing the little things to help your team win. That's what he has to be consistent at. Not just, oh, once in a while, I'll make a play. No, go out there and disrupt something. Hit the, hit somebody. You know, put pressure on them. And be consistent at that. You don't have to always get interceptions or pass breakups or none of that. Just make plays. Disrupt things. 
and you will find yourself on this 53-man roster. But also, like I said earlier, Nate Sudfeld had interceptions by Brian Branch, Cam Sutton, and again by Julian Okawara. And so today was not Nate Sudfeld's day, and the time where a phone call and agreement to Teddy Bridgewater just might happen sooner than later. You know, obviously, I am a Nate Sudfeld hater. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. I mean, a backup at best. But he's even not doing that properly. So it might be time to call Teddy Bridgewater and say, you know what, what's your price? Because we're giving it to you. You know, bring in a real backup and, you know, hey, if Jared Goff misses a day or two or a week or two, hey, we got Teddy Bridgewater then to step up and win us those one or two games or practice with the first teams for that one or two days. So it might be time. Now, James Houston and Levi Anzarike and Romeo Okawara had solid 13 reps today. And Coach Campbell believes that the Lions have done enough to solidify that defensive line going into the 2023 season. So that's definitely a a sign of good things to come. Now, if you are getting value up to this point, consider subscribing for more Detroit Lions news and updates. Definitely appreciate it. And cornerback Chase Lucas, one of my favorite players that I got an eye out for, made some nice plays today and being unchecked on a blitz that would have resulted in a sack on Adrian Martinez. Now, Detroit is trying to blitz a little bit more to simulate what they're going to see with the New York Giants because next Friday in six days, Wink Martindale led the NFL in blitzing with a 39.7%. So they're going to see a lot of blitzes coming on the 11th, which is in six days. So they got to simulate that. Obviously, we do have the joint practice, so that helps simulation of the Giants with having the Giants actually there. So that's going to be good for the Lions, you know, moving forward. And then Riley Patterson did miss a 37-yard field goal, hit the right upright. Now, there was no head-to-head battles today in practice, but, you know, you got when you get those opportunities, Riley, you got to make it. You got to kind of set yourself apart you can't continue to miss one make one this that the other you just got to make them if you want to put yourself in a position where you know you got a 53 man roster spot you have to make all your uh, field goals or your kicks because that's going to separate you from john parker romo who's actually you know we don't know who's going to be our kicker like it's that close and being a veteran you have to take care of business What is the golden rule? Never let a rookie take your job. So, Riley, you got to step up in these situations where there is no head-to-head battle. So, got to step up. Now, Dylan Drummond continues to showcase he deserves to be a part of the 53-man roster. He hauled in a touchdown by Nate Sudfeld working against Savion Smith in coverage. Now, Craig Reynolds and James Mitchell We're also active today in practice, each getting receptions when given the opportunity. Now, in practice to end it, obviously we all know that they have been ending practice in situational drills. And today's was the four-minute drill. Now, they were down 24-14 to with just under four minutes, needing multiple possessions to score both the First team and second team both had chances for the comeback. Now, Jared Goff, when needing a play, went to Amon Ross St. Brown, Sam Laporta, and Khalif Raymond and making plays against that second team defense. Now, the second team offense didn't fare as well against the first team defense. Sudfeld was pressure all throughout, giving up interceptions, pressures, and just was out of funk on multiple reps and you don't want to see that you definitely you know again like i said earlier in this video it might be time to get teddy bridgewater by whatever means necessary name a price teddy we're gonna give it to you even if it's a one-year deal like it might be that time now after practice marvin jones did talk to uh did talk to the media and he loves these situations you know with these situations 
you got to practice it a lot. Now, why do I say you got to practice it a lot? Because you're going to see a lot of these four-minute drills in a game, whether it's in the first half, to end the game, to force overtime, in overtime, you're going to see these four-minute drills and two-minute offenses and stuff like that a lot in those in an NFL season. So if you're not practicing them all the time, like you're not going to get those reps, and it's going to almost feel brand new. But Marvin Jones was, I mean, he absolutely loves it. You know, he's like, it's a great time because you get to see good reps and you get to get good reps as a receiver you know, and as a player. So good to see Marvin Jones loving these four minute drills and things like that. Definitely fun to see, but let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. What's your thoughts on day 11 of training camp? Do you like it? Do you love it? Is it time to move on from Nate Sudfeld? I am a person hashtag FNS, which is hashtag forget Nate Sudfeld. But let me know your thoughts. Definitely would love to hear it. You know, you could be in difference with me. You can like Nate Sudfeld. You don't have to, you know, like him just because I don't, or you don't have to hate him because I do. Uh, you know, lo love to hear what you have to say. And with that being said, y'all already know what to do. We are trying to grow this community. Appreciate you for reaching 1,000 subscribers Thursday. And with that being said, I will see you in the next video because grit don't quit. One prod, baby. Peace. Man, day 11 in the books. Six days away till Lions football, baby. I can't wait.